Today we are speaking about how to stop being paralyzed by fear and take action. So this is um, quite interesting that Jenny and I actually specifically chose to put this topic further up because a lot of us are kind of stuck in that space right now, um, specifically because of the, the COVID thing that's been going on. And what I find with humanity is that unless we have very clear answers, we find it very difficult to move forward because we like certainty. And right now there's so much uncertainty surrounding us that we're really getting to live with this, um, to really get to face this kind of paralysis in our lives. So I just want to very briefly start speaking about the physiology of, 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 um, of our brains. And then Jen's going to carry on about a whole bunch of stuff. She's super excited about this topic today. So when we want to change things in our lives, we can't separate our emotions from our mental, from our physical, right? We are, we are a, a, a being in its entirety and we have to look at all these different aspects. And the biggest thing that people tend to um, not look at is the physiology of how we work, right? The restrictions of the physical human being. And one of those is our brain because our brain is the driving function of everything, right? It, it drives the hormones of which our emotions are. And of course, there's, um, you know, there's so many different millions of aspects. There's the memories, um, how we personally, individually respond to a certain event. There's all of these things, but it all gets processed in the brain. And we need to understand how the brain works. And when we can understand that, it makes it a lot easier to disassociate from, from, all, from that analysis, paralysis, and, and however your paralysis takes form. So the brain itself is a, um, it's a thinking machine. That's all its job is to do is to think, right? Um, but what its primary function is to do is to conserve energy. So if we look at flight or flight, um, we know that when we go into that state, our body shuts down certain functions of our, um, our body so that it can preserve. It takes all of the, the blood flow away from the organs and it pumps our muscles so that we can run faster or that we can fight. So our body is in this constant state of flux and our brain is always telling it what to do depending on the input that is coming towards it. And the brain will always focus on conserving energy. And it does this by making us lazy. Okay. Our brains are incredibly lazy. So when we get a new idea, it's going to require the brain to do a new action, all right? It has to step out of its old habitual um, processes that it's been doing for six months or six years or 60 years, okay? Now you're trying to give it a new input and the brain goes, well, I don't want to do that because that requires hard work and then I have to start thinking again because right now I'm kind of in this um, automotive mode. I don't have to do anything new. Everything's chucking along. I've got my same habits, my same thinking patterns. Everything's working fine. Now we want to do something new. We want to take action. We want to take a risk, okay? The brain immediately red flags that and it goes, no, hang on a second. This is sounding like hard work and it starts creating reasons why it's a bad idea. And that is where the conscious version of us steps in. And now we have to now manage that and go, okay, do I want to be stopped? Do I want to be uh, paralyzed by this thinking, by this fear? Or how do I manage myself and how do I move forward? So that's the kind of physiology that's going on with ourselves on a physical level. Like our brains are hardwired to work against us. Um, so now we're looking at procrastination. We're looking at paralysis. We're looking at huge fear um, and Jen will go into that also on an adrenal level. You know, when we get into that state of, I don't know what to do, I kind of want to do this, but I just don't, you know, and you can't take that step forward. Um, it's also very much an a emotional response and our brain's doing it on purpose to stop us from taking action um, because our brains simply just don't want to do the work. Um, and there are actually two, there are two ways that people kind of personality wise deal with, it, deal with stress deal with trauma, deal with being triggered, is um, the first thing is hypervigilance, okay? And a hypervigilant person is always, go, go, yeah, you son. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> um, doesn't stop for a second. Overwhelmed, chaos, scattered, doing so many things, and often there's no follow-through. And this is the problem with hypervigilance, okay? Now, the exact opposite coping mechanism is the person who's dissociated, okay? A dissociated person, pull the duvet out of your head, lie and watch Netflix all day, every day, read a book rather than, than facing life, okay? So they're very disconnected, they shut down, um, and they're very underwhelmed. A hypervigilant person is overwhelmed. 
my God, there's so much going on. And a dissociative person is underwhelmed. They don't feel as much. They've shut themselves down. They don't engage with the life. And this is also a problem. So we actually need a healthy balance with this. And we're going to discuss some tools later on, guys, on how you can actually bring in a, a healthy balance. Um, and then I just want to go into the actual coping mechanisms that we use. So Son mentioned fight, flight, and there's fight and flight, okay? But the first go-to for human beings is actually socialization. So when we experience a situation that's uncomfortable or, or life-threatening, we can either talk ourselves out of it, we can try to talk ourselves out of the situation, or we can discuss it and come to like a resolution. But, and that is our first protocol as humans, animals don't have this. They can't chat to each other and say, guys, how are we gonna sort this situation out? But from our conditioning, from our childhood, um, and from our wounding, we actually don't use uh, socialization very much. We go straight into fight, flight, then there's freeze, and then there's fawn as well. So they're actually four coping mechanisms. There's freeze and fawn. So see if you can identify with any of these, as I explain um, the behavior around them and whatever, see if you can identify which one you are, okay? And which coping mechanism you use. So the first one being fight is the person who has bad temper. Okay, they're going to anger, this is how they deal with the situation. They're going to anger, rage. They tend to be bullying and controlling. So they don't allow anything to flow. By being controlling, you're in a stuck state. So even though you think fight may be taking action, it actually isn't because it's destructive action. It's not creative action, okay? Um, and also a person in a state of fight demands perfection. So they're perfectionists, but they actually demand it. All right. Then the next thing we're going to discuss is flight. So under flight, we get anxiety, OCD behavior, um, obsessive thinking as well. When something goes round and round and round in your head, this is flight. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck in this state. Okay. Um, and they just can't relax. All right. They just can't get into a state of relaxation. Then the third one we're going to discuss is freeze. Now, freeze is, I can't fight, I can't run away, because both of those are too dangerous or not possible in the moment. So you're into a state of freeze, all right? Freeze is that deer in the headlights. Cannot move. If it moves, it's in danger. Because um, the lion will, will outrun it. Um, and I can't fight the lion, it's not strong enough. So we go into a state of freeze, into a state of contraction. Now, when we're in a state of contraction, no growth takes place no progress, we withdraw, okay? So we're not engaging with life and there's no action taking place. Once again, a state of inaction. And foggy headed also um, falls under the state of freeze, okay? So you can't think clearly, your frontal cortex is shut down. And then the last one is fawning. So it's F-A-W-N, like the little deer. And the fawn is the people pleaser who craves acceptance, who needs to be needed. You're not your own person, so you're actually not accomplishing anything in your life by, by fawning other people. And also the, the person who uses fawn as a coping mechanism craves, um, go, sorry, goes into codependent relationships, okay? So you may have several characteristics of each of these, like it kind of crosses over, all right? You may, you may be in flight, and fawn, or you may be in fight and freeze. So they can kind of cross over, but usually you can identify with one that you'll go to. Like, I get into bed, I pull the duvet over my head, and I don't want to see anyone. Or I go out there and I clap everyone in sight, and I take, I take people on. So just see if you can identify which one is the, your go-to, because once you can identify it, then you have an awareness of what you're doing in your life, instead of just reacting all the time and once you have that awareness you can change your behavior okay